Welcome back, everybody. Today we're gonna we're gonna take apart the carburetor and rebuild it. And um, I had another video that explains how all of this stuff works. <clears throat> you know what all the parts are, why they're connected the way they are, and the problems with this white motor carburetor setup. I'm not gonna go over that here. You can see it on the other video. So now it's time to get down to business and take this apart and rebuild it. Um, one thing you want to do right away is take pictures of all four sides, top and bottom, in case you need to refer back to it and remember how something went or something like that. It's always good to do that. take this plate off, um, you know, just pull the rubber O-rings off of that, save those. If they're in good shape, you can keep them and reuse them. This is what I was talking about with this. Don't use a Phillips screwdriver on these because you can see that this fits pretty loose in here, and that's because the tip of this Phillips is actually hitting the bottom of this before taking a real bite inside the screw so you want to use this this is a jet and this is actually an impact but i use it as a screwdriver too because a lot of times i don't need to use this as an impact but it bottoms out in there and makes a good solid grip on it so i know i'm not going to strip anything out take this off gaskets And then notice that these clamps here are rusted looking. That's because they're not stainless steel. And so we're going to, not only are we going to take these off, we're going to throw them away because we're going to replace these with stainless steel Etiker clamps, which are a lot better for this anyway. Okay, we've got the two carburetors separated. That's all getting thrown away. This is all the stuff we're keeping, including this. Um, there's nothing wrong with this line. I'm going to clean it up, make sure it doesn't have any leaks around those clamps. Now that we got our bolts out, we're going to take this apart carefully. There's our membrane there for the pump. There's an O-ring here that comes out. That's something we'll replace. These are the two one-way valves. There's a little membrane here with a rubber grommet holding it in place. Those are new in the kit. Take this off. There's a, I'll take that off in just a second. There's a little plastic membrane here. Comes out like that. And then there's a rubber seal right in there and then if we carefully take this off that's replaceable too there's the other part of our one-way valve which we'll replace um, this is actually kind of rough here i'm surprised to see this we're gonna clean all that up and This is where we get to use our little tool here. Just a little brass thing with a nipple on it, but you you can use it to, to take these one-way membranes out, but also to put them back in, which we'll see later. But you just very carefully push in the middle, and they pop right out like that. That's what it looks like. Saving all these parts, and I'm putting them here in a bag labeled PTO, so I don't, I don't get them mixed up with the mag. So this is where we get into the interesting stuff. This is what I was talking about, the little 
seesaw thing right here. That's what the diaphragm pushes on. There's the needle and seed underneath that. So I'm going to take this apart. What I'm looking at is if any of these screws are chewed up and are going to be a problem. Um, one thing I notice that I don't like seeing is there's a little screw here. And that looks like it's stripped out to me. So we may have to drill that out. Actually, no, it's loose. That's a good sign. I'm gonna take the, the little, what they call the kidney screws out. Sometimes these are in there so tight, which is why I have this impact. You have to tap on it to get it to come out. That ought to come out there. And then there's usually underneath this, there's a little plastic valve, that piece right there with a tiny screw. That's plastic. We'll take that out and replace it. Gasket in here. So this is <coughs> where it gets interesting. We're gonna see if it has the shim underneath the spring or not. There's the spring. I do not see a shim. I'm gonna take out the needle. I don't know if we can see this or not. Focus. Came out. This should have a indicator on it what size it is. Last thing we're going to do here is pull this little filter out. Normally these things are full of junk, but huh, this one's actually remarkably clean. So that's a good sign. That means pretty much the fuel system's been pretty clean. Took the pump, accelerator pump off, little gasket there. I'm gonna leave all this intact and just clean it up a little bit. It doesn't need to be taken apart. Okay, so now we have everything taken apart, stripping the paint off. I'm using this aircraft uh, paint remover. It's not as good as the old stuff, but it's still pretty good. Um, you just have to make sure you put it on pretty thick and then seal it up in plastic bags like I've done here. Um, these came out pretty good the first go. Uh, I'm going to have to redo these and then the carburetors. I'm going to let those sit overnight, be continuing to work on those. Uh, what I have found out is the, uh, I was able to be able to read the jets and the needle and seats that was in it. And um, this is the spec for the this model, the 5625 is the GSX Limited Grey Ghost. And you can see it's a, it is a uh, main jet of 162.5 and, and 80 for the pilot and a 1.8 needle and seat. And that is what I saw in there. So that means the carburetors were original. But I'm going to go up to a 165 main jet, 82.5 pilot, bump up the needle and valve to 2.0 with a 95 gram spring. These are essentially 99 specs, more or less. It's on the 
the rich side of fuel and not the lean side. That was one of the problems here is that these these were too lean. Uh, but we're looking for a pop-off pressure of between 19 and 23 PSI. Okay, so we've stripped them. We've uh, scrubbed them, washed them in really very hot, soapy water. Got all the old paint off of it. Uh, they came out really good and clean. These carburetors were in good shape to begin with. I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, but if you do, of course, you would want to use that. And things like people boil them in pine salt and water and other kinds of stuff like that. I got it very, very clean. Uh, blew it out with compressed air, everything completely 100% dry. And then I took carb cleaner and I sprayed through all the little channels, all the little holes, all of these nipples, fittings, everything, made sure that it all came through clear. And then carb cleaner has a little bit of oil in it. And so since we're going to paint the outside, I washed down the outside with brake cleaner to remove that oil residue. And then I took this gloss black Rust-Oleum paint that I just happened to have, enamel, oil-based paint, and a paintbrush. It was a little, this is not the paintbrush. It was a little bit bigger than this. I actually had a wider tip on it, but use a small paintbrush. And that way you can get into all of these little nooks and crannies. It's just too hard to try to spray paint, you know, without you know, overdoing it in some areas and not getting it enough in other areas. But I'm real happy with how those turned out. Those look look great and good, very good coverage. And then these pieces um, were flat enough and easy enough that I just went ahead and and uh, spray painted those with my uh, Mercruiser Phantom Black enamel, which I have here. But any any enamel will work fine. The one that I didn't paint, though, was this one because... Um, it actually cleaned up pretty well, and uh, I'm actually going to leave it like this. Uh, I think it looks pretty good that way. Um, I might paint it later. I don't know. You can take it off and paint it, but uh, I'm just going to leave it like that because I thought it looked pretty cool. And then, of course, we've got our, our pump that we just painted the outside here. Be careful you don't get into the insides of those channels or anything like that. Um, and then we got our rebuild kit here, so we are ready to put this back together. There's a couple more brackets that I'm stripping, and uh, I'm going to paint those. And the main bracket that goes across the middle, also stripping that, and I'm going to powder coat that one. All right, so now we are ready to, we're going to start with the PTO carburetor. That's the one with the fuel pump. The other one doesn't have the pump. So what you want to do is make sure you've got your sequence of all these gaskets. You know, they all have to go in a very specific order and they have to be oriented the right way. And I've already done all that. I've got everything laid out in the exact order. So all I have to do is go down the line and pick them. You probably can't see it, but these are the clear plastic ones here. But everything's situated the right way. The curve is all on the bottom. And so we start with the filter. And then finally, the pump cover itself. Get the bolts in here started, screws like that. That is how you put the pump back on. So that is all good. So now we're going to move on to putting our jets in and the other side. Quick and easy way to test your pump is <clears throat> this is uh, this is all sealed off, right? So if you just suck on that with your mouth and let it catch your tongue, it should hold your tongue in there for 10 seconds. So it should be a solid uh holding suck on that so that's enough to test that you don't have to get complicated with it and then this on your intake 
remember there's those two one-way valves in there and so what you want to make sure is you you should be able to gently blow freely through that it should be any restrictions but then when you suck back on it you should feel like a lot of restriction like you almost can't suck back on it at all but it doesn't have to be completely airtight like this one is because it's not the same kind of thing there are just little plastic membranes laying on some aluminum um, so they're not, you know, they don't have to be like perfectly seal tight and hold pressure like that. Um, they just need to seal for backwards pressure. But you can just, you can check that stuff without any special equipment. Okay, so next thing is we're going to do the other side of the carburetor, which is where all your good stuff happens. The jets, the needle and seat, all of that. So this is a kind of a mixture of old and new parts. That's a new gasket. We're reusing the lever, pivot arm, the little clamp for the needle and seat, the screws. Uh, this is the little block there that goes on top of the jets, which we've got a 165 main jet that we ordered and an 82.5 idle or pilot jet. And then we've got a 95 gram spring, which I probably have about six of those now. So I don't know how I ended up so many of them, but hopefully that one's not going to be too strong and we won't have to go back down to a black spring. But we're going to put all this stuff back in. Not really much to show here. It's just a pretty straightforward process, the reverse of what you do when you take it apart. Once we do get it back together, we're going to put WD-40 down in the little reservoir there, and we're going to do a pop-off test. Remember on these, these are not just Phillips, they're jits, so you want to use your special screwdriver so that you don't strip these things out. I just use my impact driver because it's got the right kind of tip on it. Get them nice and snug. And we're going to put our, our seat in and can't see it here, but I'm just putting the, just a touch of WD-40 on it to get it down into this hole like that. You want it to kind of pop in and seat. And you got this little thing that goes in there. And then our little screw. You got to remember which one it is. We've got two here. So it's this one. Remember, these things do have little lock washers on them. So when they have lock washers on them, you don't have to get them so tight they strip out. So now we're going to put our, our spring in. It goes here. Put our little pivot arm in. sure that that pivot works and that it's on the spring. When you push down on it, you want to make sure it opens up that needle and seat. Okay, so now we're going to do the famous pop-off test. You need some sort of a pop-off pressure pump here that holds one-way pressure. I made this one. You can buy them for under $30. All right, so... We've got this connected to our intake. I've got this looped off just to seal it. That's sealed off. So only way out is through the needle and seat, which is here. I'm going to fill up this reservoir a little bit with a little bit of um, WD-40. All right, here we go. Round two. 
trying to do this where we can see it. Up to 20. All right, that was, looked like that was about 25. Well, that was well over 25. Not really liking how that's turning out, to be honest. All right, so after repeated attempts here, pretty consistently got around 25, 26 PSI, which if we look at the Makuni manual, this is not the Sea-Doo manual, this is Makuni for a 2.0 needle and seat with the 95 gram spring, guess what? It is in fact 25 PSI. So despite what people were telling me about using a 95 gram spring, um, I actually wanna be closer to 21 PSI, which means I need the black spring. So, and to confirm that, this is the Sea-Doo carb chart. And for my model here, between 19 and 23 PSI is what we're looking for. So right at about 21 or 22. So I could just send it like this and see what happens. But I'm going to go ahead and order the black springs and see if I can get a lower pop off. Okay, so we're going to move on to the mag side. Um, we're, we're still waiting on a, we got to get some black springs cause we did a pop off test and found out that our PSI was too high at 26. So, but while we're doing that, um, there's no reason why we can't go ahead and move on to the mag side and at least get that squared away. This one's a little easier cause it doesn't have the fuel pump on it. for the accelerator pump. The uh, exploded diagram is just a tad bit vague on some of this, but I think we can figure it out. Clearly we've got a, the new diaphragm goes in there. Okay, after a little bit of a false start, I realized I had no idea how this went back together. And so fortunately I had uh, taken some pictures, and so now I remember how those springs went back together. So. This is easy to test. Just hold your finger over it and squeeze the little thing down and then it, you should feel a little pressure right okay so my 80 gram springs got those so i'm going to take out the 95 gram here i'm going to put in that 80 gram and we're going to retest the pop-off 
Here's what they look like side by side. Let's see if I can steady the camera here. All right, so we're gonna do roughly what we did before now that we've got the black spring in. Fill that up with a little bit of WD-40. Gonna pop it. Okay, well, turns out I, I couldn't, couldn't live with myself not understanding why those springs were different. And so it turns out that when I, when I went to put the spring in the mag carburetor, I got a very different reading that looked more normal, what I would expect. So I started looking at it, and I found out that the hole that the spring goes in is deeper in the mag than it is the PTO. And then I thought about these white carburetors, they, they had shims for the springs. I've read about it, I've never seen it, not many people have seen it, hence, you know, stuff with the gray ghost. Um, and so I started measuring it, and I found out that it did, in fact, have a little shim down in the spring hole for the PTO carburetor. And here's what that looked like. So I took it out by taking the tiniest little drill bit that I have there, you probably can't see that because of the focus, but it is super, super small. And I drilled a little hole down in there, which is this thing, and then I took a screw and screwed it into that hole. And I worked it out, and lo and behold, it actually does have it did have the shim in there. So that explains why I was getting very peculiar readings on these springs. So I took that out, went back through both carburetors, put in the black springs, and got a really low pop-off pressure. Like, it may be too low. It's close to, like, 18. It might be too low, but I would rather it be too low than too high. Um, and I'm just going to – I'm going to get – these are the specs that I wanted – um, it's possible my gauge may be off a little bit, like I said, but, you know, I've got the springs I want, I've got the needle valves I want, and I've got the jets that I want. And so I'm going to try that combination and, uh, and then we're just going to put everything back together here. I've got the brackets on, um, I've got all the inside parts on that actually came together pretty well. So, uh, now it's just a matter of putting the connector hoses on there and putting the the plate that holds the carbs together on. Okay, so now we're going to connect these together with our fuel line. This is a fast flow. What I am going to do, though, is instead of using screw clamps, which can chew in to the rubber and create an imperfect seal on these, I'm going to use uh, Etiker clamps. This is the preferred way to do it. They're OEM. They're perfectly round. I dropped that one so you can't see it. Here's a big one. Got a whole bunch of them here. Um, so you need a tool to crimp them, or you can use diagonal wire cutters if you want to. You kind of ruin them if you do it too much, but...
There we go. So all hoses are on. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Got our our bracket. Uh, everything's done. All of our internals are all working and checked out. So at this point, I feel fantastic about this carb setup. So these are the white carbs, but we've basically um, changed them to be the 99 specs, bigger needle and seat, 2.0 needle and seat, and got it written down here somewhere, 165 main jet, 82.5 pilot jet, and an 80 gram spring with a pop-off pressure of, turns out based on my gauge was right around 19, which is the lower end of the spectrum, but that's great. We want it to pop off sooner rather than later. So uh, this is good to go. We are finished with the carbs. And uh, thanks for watching. And if you got any questions or comments, please leave those below or give me a like if you want to. And stay tuned for the next episode of Gregos Resurrection.